Well, hello everybody and welcome to the KMC Controls Simply VAV webinar. So happy to have you with us today. Uh, my name is Andrew Reynolds. I'm here with Tom Joslin. He's our uh, manager of technical sales here at KMC Controls and he's going to be presenting some information on our Simply VAV product line today. Um, before we get started, we just wanted to let you know uh, feel free to ask all the questions you want. Uh, you can enter those in and we'll be kind of tagging those as we go through the webinar. And we'll also have a questions uh, slide at the end where you can kind of type things out and ask all your questions. Um, and before I hand it over, I just wanted to let everyone know we just filmed a new series of Simply VAV videos uh, covering kind of choosing your model, installing uh, and adding to a backnet network. And we're going to continue to add to those series uh, to make sure you can know how to do every uh, little thing with Simply VAV. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tom. Hi there. Good morning out there in Controls Land. Hope everybody's having a good Friday so far. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Simply VAV, like, uh, like Andrew was saying. So let's talk first a little bit about choosing your VAV model. So this is probably the one thing that tends to get everybody uh, stuck a little bit or not necessarily stuck but this is the one thing I think is probably the most important is picking make sure you're getting the right one because what you get is uh, the only thing that you're going to be able to do with it you can't change anything with it hence the name simply VAV so with that the back 8001 which is the top model right there and they all have a little tag on there just like it shows on the graphic it says <clears throat> it's designed for a single duct Heating and cooling VAV when reheat is not required. Now, this also doesn't give you any kind of feedback or anything like that. So that's probably the, the most basic model. Moving on is a BAC 8005. It features all the same thing as the 8001. We're just going to kind of build on, on each model here. With the additional functions for the modulating, floating, time proportional, staged reheat, so forth. It also allows you to do the series in parallel fan control. This one also will give you the DAT discharge air temp limiting uh, used for fan and reheat applications. So then we move on to the 8205. I think this is probably the most popular one. Uh, it features all the eight all the same thing as the 8005, but it's got the true damper positioning feedback, which is what a lot of people really want. So you can use this for precise control with fan and reheat. I think the 8205 is probably the, like I said, the, the most popular one. So people always say, hey, I've got an 8205. I need to add something to it. I need to add an exhaust fan to it. Can I do that? Uh, no. <laughs> so the, the, the beauty of this is that it's, uh, it's, it's already programmed. Everything's in there. There's no programming involved with these controllers. And with that, you can't add anything either. So whatever you get is what you're going to be using. So <clears throat> the back 8007 is for dual duct applications. And you've got to use the secondary actuator, obviously, because you've got two ducts. So um, the, the, uh, like I was saying, you can't really use anything other than what the program is in there already. So next thing you want to do is think about what sensor you want to use. So there's some specific sensors for these. So the 8001 is the large LCD with a three button interface. It's probably the most common. And then there's the, uh, the 8201, which features the motion sensor, which is nice. Senses allows for detecting occupancy and control temperature setback. And then you've got the, uh, the small SDE 6010, a simple temperature only sensor, very economical. And then you've got the, with the rotary dial and you've got one with just nothing on it. It's just a sensor. It includes the, uh, well, the 6017 has a button for overriding temperature setback. So based on what you want to use, based on what you want to do, you can, uh, you could pick which one of these that's going to work best for you. The, uh, probably the STE 1001, I think is probably used the most. That's, that's a nice model that does, uh, most of the things that, uh, we're going to need. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about setting this thing up auxiliary flow. So 
auxiliary flow in in how we set this up and let me go back just one more step so you're going to set this up using your net sensor so all of the menus and all of the setup is in inside the net sensor so when you hook that up all of your menus and everything it'll walk you through how to set up your simply vav so there's no computer needed there's no software needed everything is included in this uh in this net sensor so if you if you were to buy a uh small like ste 6010 you would probably you're going to need at least one of these uh, uh stes 88001 just to be able to set this up a term used interchangeably with reheat is auxiliary flow so one of the settings in here is auxiliary flow so when we talk when this is saying auxiliary flow it's meaning reheat so if there's a call for reheat to maintain room temperature, the primary airflow is set to the value of auxiliary flow. So when the reheat doesn't turn on, there's a couple of, there's a couple of reasons for that. So the auxiliary flow is used for reheat. If it's set to zero, it won't work. The CFM must be set to a reasonable level. You've got to have at least 75% uh, of the requested airflow before the heat will turn on. Now, this is probably even more so if you have an electric reheat. Most of the electric reheats will have a, an internal switch as well that requires you to have you know, so much airflow before it'll even turn on the, uh, the electric reheats, or as toaster ovens as I call them. <clears throat> so auxiliary flow is a reheat. And then heating min and max. Use when your uh, airflow is uh, and your warm air is being supplied to the unit from the air handler. So you can make sure you're being uh, you're only using the heat that you need to use on your reheat. So if you're getting heat from your air handler, you don't necessarily need to. Uh, there's some things in there that you can set up in the parameters <clears throat> so that that will uh, that'll work a lot better. The um, when the air handler is uh, is is giving it air, uh, warm air, it doesn't necessarily need to turn on the reheat, so it kind of figures that out for you. <clears throat> now this is important when you get to the part where you start doing uh, airflow procedures and doing some balancing on this. So have some patience. Give it plenty of time to go through, and you only want to do this one time on a box, preferably one time. If you go back and do it again, you're going to reset everything. You're going to have to go through the whole balancing one more time on this box. It's not like you, you can't just go back in and change one setting. So try to do it right the first time and give it plenty of time. Command the VAV to full cooling and then no cooling to check your min and max values. So make sure you give that motor that actuator time to, to, to run its full max and min. I think it's a 90 second motor. So wait a couple minutes. Don't, and, uh, and let the, and let the uh, sensor settle out a little bit before you go putting values in. That way it'll work a whole lot better. <clears throat> when you're entering balancing, like I was just saying, let the process complete fully. Give it ample time for the actuator to fully open and close. If it's skipped or rushed, yeah, the box will not control as desired. So you're going to not get to the flow that you want to get, or you're going to be too low. So like I was saying, give it plenty of time. Automatic occupancy. So if that's enabled, the controller automatically toggles between the occupied, unoccupied, and standby. Now, if you've got that little uh, motion sensor on your on your net sensor, it'll detect the presence of motion in the zone and also uses the primary airflow. So if there's no flow, it'll be set to unoccupied. So it's smart enough to know, hey, I don't have any air coming, so I'm going to go back to unoccupied and, uh, and try to save you some, uh, some energy as well for that. So there's a lot of there's a lot of smart things that are in here that it does for you. Now, Simply VAV doesn't have schedules or trends that you use uh, 
like that are in the KMZ con conquest. So you've got to tell it what those uh, schedules schedules are going to be. <clears throat> With our conquest model, those have schedules and trends built into the controller. This uh, simply a VAV does not. So it's relying on a front end to give you a schedule. You've got to tell it when to go occupied and unoccupied. <clears throat> the conquest VAVs obviously have trends, alarms, advanced application controller, uh, so you can program everything into it. Whereas the simply VAV simply does not. Um, and it's an economical way for you to get the uh, control, good control into a, an environment for a, for a good price point. Now, I will say this, if you've got a job that's out there and you've got 40 VAVs and you've got maybe two of them that might need a, an exhaust room, an exhaust for a, a restroom or something like that. So you can mix and match these on the network on your MSTP. So you could have 28 of these back 8,000 ones and then two of 9,000 ones which have the exhaust fan program in them. So you can mix and match them. DAT limiting. So you need a separate discharge air temperature sensor. This follows the ASHRAE sequence, obviously, and it's recommended to be used with modulating heat only. It saves energy, increases comfort, true. So what that does is if you look at the chart right there, so as the uh, room temp starts to go up, a DAT loop starts to come down. So it's a little another one of those smart features that we use that's built in. <clears throat> we try to do as much of this, uh, what we think would be a smart energy usage that's inside this program that you really don't have to think anything about it, just does it. There's some diagnostics that's built into it as well. So need a A2 BV1, need colder supply, BV2. You can map these points into your front end as well. So need more static, need hotter supply. So you could actually map those to uh, a graphic or whatever it is you'd like to have on your front end. So these diagnostic indicators or flags are monitored by other BACnet devices connected to the building automation system. So uh, it, kinda, it, it can give you some good uh, feedback on what's going on. So uh, looks like we don't really have any questions right yet, but while we're waiting for those questions to filter in, uh, I kind of did want to show some people online here just where to get our information on uh, all the specifics. So we just take a quick look here. Um, so on our on our website, on the public side of the website, you can get all the information on Simply VAV basically right here. They've got the links uh, to each type of the actuator. Uh, but what we have is the application installation guide, and you can find out anything you need to know right here. Um, you can simply say, I want to know more about connecting a DAT sensor. You can click it. We've got all that information here built right into the app guide. These things are tremendously helpful. Um, so, and, and you can just basically find anything within this. Um, we also have the quick start guide, which I believe ships with the actual unit itself, um, which kind of details out all the pieces and parts. So if you're unfamiliar with it, it, it's very simple to get very familiar with it very quickly. And we also have a sheet that goes through the menu, uh, the entire menu sequence, yep. you know, which is absolutely fantastic. So you can kind of. Yeah, that's how that's your setup guide right there. Mm -hmm. Your uh, all your menus you go through on your net sensor to set it up. Absolutely. So cool. It looks like we got a couple questions. Let's take a look here real quick. <clears throat> so Cameron, you asked as the as the heat signal goes from zero to fifty, does the airflow ramp up as the heat signal goes from fifty to hundred? So the airflow, meaning the the actuator on the uh, on the on the VAV box, um, I, yeah, I think it does. So I, and I, I assume that's what you're talking about. Can simply VAV run with other manufacturers' Niagara-based front ends? Yes, it's it's back now. 
So yeah, Frank, that's your, uh, I think that was your question there. So yeah, and that's something it does show up as a back net controller. So. Right. That's something we cover in our video series too, that we mentioned earlier um, in the presentation. We kind of go over how you can add that into a back net network yep. and how the controllers are visible there, which is great. Um, and then as far as our webinars, you can always watch our webinars uh, on YouTube. We'll publish this one uh, later today on YouTube. And we can find all those uh, great things there. Um, let's see. Just just wait for a couple more questions just to give you guys a chance. Um, let's see. Oh, can simply. Oh, it looks like oh, that's the same one. Same question. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Well, well yeah. yeah. So. Thank you, everyone. This is mm -hmm. you know if you if you don't have any other questions. Feel free to check it out. All those, obviously, we've got the new videos online, mm -hmm. which are great. Um, and I think those spell out a lot of the, they may have a lot of more uh, visual um, representations of going through and setting the boxes up. But if you're looking for a good price point um, on, a, on a VAB controller that does a lot of, a lot of uh, very cool energy efficient ways um, that it, you don't really have to do anything other than plug it in and turn it on. Uh, I think it's a really good product. Mm -hmm. It's really is just simple. Simply yeah, it's, it's, it, is, it is exactly what it says. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you can always connect with us on our social media platforms too. There's all of our tags for each of our platforms. We put a lot of our content on YouTube. Um, we are constantly posting on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn. Um, so you can always reach out to us there, ask us questions. We're very responsive, and uh, we hope to be the responsive and supportive uh, people here at KMC. Uh, again, we appreciate everyone coming in and watching our webinar today, uh, and we thank you for your questions. And as always, we want you to have a uh, wonderful Friday and a lovely December. Thank you.